we're all going. Yeah. Everything's everything. This is this is tough, man. Yeah. There's like three candles. There's one. I'm I'm not in that frame. Am I kind of in that frame? Should we zoom You're that kind out? Kind of. Yeah. In? Zoom out. Zoom in a little bit. Oh, so hi. No, now it's just me. I'm yeah. just in this yeah, frame now. I don't want to be in that frame. And then I'm in <laughs> this. This is one. my camera. Like you'll get my shoulder, but <laughs> your shoulder looks good though. And Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, everything should be rolling. Audio should be like. We're going off one mic, so if it sounds like a little janky, it's like tin or whatever, it's Chris's new favorite word. Yeah, no, janky. Dictionary, it's amazing. done. <laughs> janky defines like, yo, that's a janky setup. Like, look at that janky car. Like, even if like, yo, that was a janky slight. Like I say, it works across the board. So have fun with it. Yeah, new you know? favorite word. Yeah, let's just uh, enjoy it. Remember where it came from. Yeah, Hundo P is out, Janky's yeah. in. Hundo P is Chris's thing. Between the two of us, our vocab is just like absurd. Yeah, our own dictionary, it's like 100 pages thick. Ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> here, here's, the, here's the concept for today's video. Um, I, I like to post Mondays, Tuesdays, sometimes Fridays, but I like to keep it sporadic. I don't want to ever... I don't want to stick to a specific schedule because things happen and different people are in town and sometimes I'm out of town and I just like the, the sporadic, like the just off the cuff nature of YouTube. I don't know about you. Yeah. If you're the same way. No, like go with the flow. Like the yeah. thing is like everything's always in a constant state of change. So like you want to like have fun with it. Like if somebody new's in town or like whatever's happening. Or if you're like come up to our boat and I'm like, oh, I didn't even plan. Okay. Yeah, that'll be great. I'll, I'll post that tomorrow. Yeah. So I've never really, all that to say, <laughs> I was trying to come up with an idea for a video for tomorrow and I was like, oh, I'll call Chris and see if like, if, if he has any, if he has any ideas. And we talked for like 28 minutes. Yeah. It was more like three hours. It felt like an eternity <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a good way. And I was like, oh, I haven't seen you. And then we were talking about like kite surfing and like the most random thing. We weren't talking about kite surfing, yeah, but it's just- janky hair. It just, it covered yeah, a lot of stuff. It just kept going like it is right now. <laughs> but. The idea we came up with was let's make a video. Okay, so what do we, what do we make a video about with regards to ideas? Let's make a video about coming up with ideas because I mean it's something that we do every single day. Like it's yep. it's part of the process of creating every single day, and it's tough. It's not always easy. And we started getting chat. Like we started to talk about it more and more. And then we're like, Yo, this is great. You should come over. Yep. Let's set up three cameras and just like have this conversation on camera because. I feel like I just said camera eight times, but I feel like yeah. this could be valuable for other creators that are doing the same thing, yeah. that are in the position of having to, this is throwing me off so much. Like, yeah, so I, many cameras I, I don't to know where at. to look. It's like a newsroom and like he's just waiting for the red light, like this camera, now this oh, one, now like this I should, one. I should pull out my phone so yeah. you guys can actually like, I'll put like a little, a little video clip in of my phone so you guys can see what we're looking at right now. Yeah. I don't know whether to look, I don't even know where to point. Like that's me, that's Chris, that's us, that's the monitor. It's paparazzi basically. We gotta make sure we're <laughs> we're in the right direction of, it's it's crazy. Anyways, I'll, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> so, that's one more angle actually, just yeah. the iPhone angle in the corner. Now there's, now there's four cameras <laughs> yeah. to deal with. So the overall concept is how do you come up with an idea for a video? And sometimes are you trying too hard? Are you putting too much work into the idea when it's not really even being expected of you. So I think let's start things off by saying like, the amount of work that you put into something doesn't, with regards to YouTube, doesn't necessarily convert to views. Yes. That's fair to say. No, 100%. Yeah. There, and, and you can see it in the stats. Like I'll look through my YouTube channel. I'll be like, oh, that video that I spent four hours on has way more views than when I went to the Azores for eight days and edited for like 40 hours. Yeah. Like I did a whole short <laughs> film on Kenya for, I was there for like seven days. It took me like more than seven days to edit that video, send it to a thousand people. It did pretty good, but it didn't do as good as like chasing a lemon down the street. Yeah. Which was great, by the way. Which was great. But like... <laughs> But like you think about it, like I literally, okay, so fun fact about that lemon video, it was like 40 minutes to sunset and I was standing in my kitchen and I was like, I don't have time to do this today. And my wife was like, what, how long, what time is it? I'm like, it's like, it's five o'clock, sunsets in 45 minutes. She's like, so just go. You have 45 minutes to chase a lemon around town. You can't get that done. And I was like, that's a great point. So I just went and did it, got it done, 45 minutes. Great concept, funny. Yep did way better than a lot of my videos that I've planned and shot for like 
days and days and days. Yeah, over like over planning kills it sometimes. And it kills the energy on things too. Like there's so many times where like I've planned out the whole thing of everything I want to say and I'm like, all right, point number one, I'll start talking to camera. I'm like, uh, and I just, it doesn't feel natural. But then sometimes when like you haven't planned and there's like, we just go and do something really fun. Like that video is great and it's really yeah. fun. And you, you kind of like create in the moment. Like my favorite song, I used to be a musician, by the way. I used to be a musician, by the way. And my favorite song I ever wrote, I wrote in an hour. That like it it kind of chaps my ass a little bit. Yeah. Just because like I but it's it's a good thing to remember when you're creating content. And we were talking about uh, a specific video. Like, okay, so Christmas time, Casey's video with Samsung that I helped them with. We did like we turned a whole abandoned mall into a winter wonderland. Like that's Epic. crazy. Like that's like oh you think about that from a from like content standpoint. You're like that is so good. There's so much to film there. Like that's gonna be a great vlog. And then I went and made a vlog about how to vlog and I scrapped that whole thing and just talked to the camera. Like there was no cuts. There wasn't even like a crossfade yep. in that whole video. And it did better than the abandoned mall snow palace thing. Like, and you, you think to yourself, well, like how, why is that? And I think it's because like people want, like, like we've said in that video, people want your personality. They just want to see you. It doesn't really matter what you're doing, which is why you said one of my favorite videos of yours He's like when I went to get the mail or something. Or... Yeah, when he went to go like pick up his coffee machine. That's what it was. I remember yeah. just being like, I think I've been through like a similar experience going to like pick something up. And like the relatability of that video is what stuck with me. Like I don't know why. Like sometimes I'll think of Peter's channel and people will be like, oh yeah, when he went like swing and does yeah. the stuff. It's like, no, no, when he picked up his coffee machine. That's my favorite video. But it's like, and that reminded me like when I cleaned my garage for a video because like I think of Ty Lopez, like <laughs> yeah. here at my garage. Yeah. Um... <laughs> you want to be successful? <laughs> Read book. Yeah, shoot on a camera. <laughs> but like I was cleaning all the boxes, right? Because I have a problem with cardboard. And everyone was like, how did I just watch a 10 minute video of this dude cleaning his garage? And like, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And it was interesting. And I'm sure that video is done better than like half the stuff that I've like, okay, sometimes like it takes me several days to shoot a vlog. Like the one we did together. Yeah. We got back together the next day and just like kept it going. You put all this work into it. Not that that's a bad thing. Work ethic. And putting all that kind of work into a vlog is great. I, yeah. I, I don't, this isn't like us saying, don't, don't work, try. <laughs> don't, don't try, just film whatever because it's probably going to do the same. Yeah. It's not that. Sometimes that is the case and, and that's kind of the point. Um, it's just that, you know, we spent an hour on the phone this morning and ended up just making the idea about making a video about making ideas. Yeah. It's, it's like this, so meta, guys. It's like this super <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, weird loop that we're going to be talking about, but I don't know. It's just sometimes it's a bit discouraging though. I don't know if, if you have that because like you work hard on an edit and you try something new, you're color grading and you're like super pumped. You find the perfect music. Those map bars come down, B-roll starts and you're like, whoo. And then you make a video talking about like shoes for two minutes on the, on the curb with like the, the most janky angle <laughs> that you could possibly find. And it does way better. Yeah. But okay, so there's the thing I like about it. There's no recipe to success for this. There's yeah. that's what it keeps you on your toes all the time because the fact that you can't be like, oh, I can just do this over and over again and it's gonna get like a million views each time, that just doesn't become fun. And this the whole idea of YouTube from my perspective is it's like you get to use it as a creative platform, try new things, and because the audience will resonate with it in different ways and will find its way on the internet in different forms and factors, you can always just be creating. And the exciting thing is if you don't rely on the fact of views, you can just use it to create and, and you can be like excited by the fact if something does really well. And like that's what I love is it yeah. keeps you on your toes and constantly keeps you thinking of new ideas. Yeah, and sometimes like you're filled with ideas. Sometimes it's just like, I can't stop coming up with ideas. Like I check my phone, a little notes app, brrr, just like tons of them. And then sometimes there's just nothing. And I call Chris and we chat for 30 minutes and the idea ends up being- Yeah, about making ideas. Making about, yeah, <laughs> yeah, making about ideas. But like, I don't know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard. And we liken this to uh, setting like setting expectations. And it's funny because like, I, I feel like because I teach cinematography and photography and I love to like make the videos look as best as I possibly can. I have this like false idea in my mind that every video that I make has to be like the best video I've ever made. Yep. The intro has to be incredible. It has to have like a great story. The ending has to be great. There's gotta be humor in it. Like there has to be tasty, slow cooked, like yeah. juicy, delicious to the right temperature B-roll. Everything has to just be on point. 
or it's not a good video. And I think that like sometimes, you know, obviously your audience don't have the same expectations. It's funny, like, yeah. okay, so for example, let's use Casey for an example. Yep. I like never, if, if I see that he's posted, I never think to myself, oh, this better have X, Y, and Z before yep. I hit play. I just hit play because I want to see Casey. He's my yeah. friend. I just want to see what he's up to. You like his personality. Or I just like his videos. Yeah, yeah, I don't actually think like, well, there better be a drone shot. <laughs> there better be some fucking map bars coming down there. I the Coffee I has to be in there. Chris better be on his one wheel. His hair better be down. It must not be in a bun. It has to be <laughs> flowing. <laughs> Like people don't have those, we have those expectations yeah. as creators. And I think that's part of what sometimes makes it hard to make videos. Yeah, that puts so much pressure on the creative process too, because then it doesn't become fun because then you're just like, oh, it has to be this or it has to be epic or like every idea isn't good enough. But really you could just have something simple, build on that like the lemon video yeah. and go and have fun with it. And I think that's such a key thing is like, yeah, this is all fun. supposed to be like, you're supposed to have fun. YouTube is supposed to be yeah, we're making a fun videos. thing. We're making videos. With our friends and just yeah. like being creative and like you are the director of everything. Like you are the, my friend Chris Ramsey always says like, you're the god of your own social media. So like yeah. you can do whatever you want. It shouldn't be stressful. It should be yeah. like, oh, I've got a great idea. I'm going to chase a lemon around town. I'm going to have fun doing it and, and peace out. It shouldn't be like sitting in bed at night like, oh, yeah. I need content and it yeah. has to be, it has to raise the bar from the last video I did. And yeah. it's, it's easy, super easy to get into that for me anyway. Like I struggle with that a lot. Well, and it kills the energy too. Like I find like a big thing that like excites me about my favorite videos, the ones that like I'm most proud of are the ones where like I was like, I was in a good mood. It felt really like natural. Everything was kind of coming together and we were like yeah. living in the moment, bouncing off ideas versus it being like, no, that we that's not in there. Has to have the drone shot here. And the like, edit happens easier too, right? Yeah. Like you're editing and you're like, suddenly you're just done and you're like, damn, that's a good vlog. Like yeah. I'm, that's just solid good vlog. Like you don't struggle through the edit. You're not like, eh, it's just like the music, the pacing, start to finish, Ugh. everything just happens. Yeah. And then when you're I like, sit down to a planned edit where I'm like almost following it on my phone being like, oh, okay, cool. Now I just have to do the work yeah. rather than being like, oh, I could put this here. I could do this. Or like I could flip the image around and like that it would be It makes a huge difference when you're excited about the edit yeah. and you're not really thinking about the edit because you're in the zone with the edit. Like, yeah. It's just like, it's suddenly it's just like, it's just done. And you're like, oh, great. Like I remember the, the, the couple videos I made before, the couple videos that I made before like the, uh, the abandoned mall in Milwaukee. I remember there's lots of planning to do with those because I was like, I'm not going to be at home. Like, how yeah. am I? I should bring Jesse to come help me with these vlogs. And like, it was a, it was a big process. And the video I made right after, like when we got back to New York to edit that video, the Casey's final video, I think I started filming in Casey's studio at like 6 p.m. I ordered some room service. It was like a super fast vlog that like I didn't even put anything behind. Like there was no B-roll in it. And I remember getting home thinking like, I... I might not even have enough for a full episode. And that, that's another topic yeah. in itself, right? You never think you have enough. And then like I made this vlog, titled it, it talked about like a camera hack in there. And I was like, that's cool. Like, yeah, I'm down with this. That vlog did like better than the last like four videos before it. Yeah. And it's just like so interesting. And that's kind of where this whole thing comes from. But like, yeah, I remember thinking that like, I don't even think I have five minutes of content. I think I cut stuff out. Like yeah. that's always, yeah. didn't that happen to you like, like yeah. a day ago? Chris's last vlog, same thing. Yeah. We had this whole scene and it's like we shot this whole thing and just like gone. And I was like, yeah. it's funny that like a little bit of talking goes a long way, but you never think you have enough. You get home and you end up dropping so much. So like, it, but I never remember that stuff when I'm out there shooting. I'm always just thinking that like, no, I got to keep going. I got to make this better. I got to put all these pressures on myself to meet expectations yeah. that don't really exist. And it's so easy to fall into that trap. So if I had to give anyone advice who's starting a vlog, who is looking at starting a channel or making videos currently yeah. is that like your audience isn't expecting like an Oscar award winning vlog tutorial, whatever you're doing review tech review. Yeah. They just want some consistent. They just want to see you having fun doing yeah. what you love. And I think that's super easy to forget. Yeah. A hundred percent. For, for me, like the whole reason why I started this and wanted to get into it was to have a platform to just share my personality, get more comfortable on camera, have 
fun making content. Like I own a production company and all the videos that we make now, like literally I used to when I was younger, make all these super fun videos and it shifted into like a business and then it became not as much fun. I was like, yeah. no, I need to have You're fun like, again. Oh, I don't want to go and shoot then that. the first couple months of YouTube, oh, this is so much fun. And then all of a sudden the stress started creeping in and I was like, no, 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 no. Expectations, push them out. Go back to those feeling that that feeling you had when you first started. I think is so key. Yeah. And in, enjoy when you first pick up a camera and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take pictures of best. everything. Yeah. Because it's just so much fun. Grass yeah. blades. I don't care what it is. And now it's like I need to be standing in front of the most epic mountain vista. Yeah. To be satisfied to take a photo. <laughs> yeah. And even when I'm there, I'm like, nah. If it was sunset, it'd be better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's terrible. Yeah. When, when did this happen? Yeah. Where are the northern lights right now? Yeah. Come on. Who here, by show of hands, who here uh, has seen The Office? That's, is that uh, your favorite show? Yeah, uh, by far. But why is it, okay, so like my favorite show is like Lost, 24. Those seem so old now, like 24. Like yeah. That happened back in like the 80s, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? It's like The Office is the only show I watch. And it's funny because people will be like, oh, well, have you seen the latest Netflix? It's like, oh, The Office again for the 18th time in a row watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the reason why I love The Office so much, uh, two reasons. Number one is they've turned like a normal situation, a very like everyday thing uh, into something epic, into something that you can relate to. And I think the relatability of The Office is what pulled me in so much. And number two is it's so character driven, like you fall in love with the personalities. And I think on YouTube, you don't fall in love with people's concepts. Like you'll see one video, be like, that was a great concept. You don't but, fall in love with the mountains yeah, that I'm but, shooting. But what, like, what has you coming back and what I think is one of your strongest things is people love your personality and people love certain YouTube personalities. You constantly keep coming back, you're like subscribe to their personality and you will yeah. watch whatever situation they're in over and over again because you wanna see how that personality reacts to it. And I think that's such, an important part. You'd be like, oh, I should go do this. I should like go on an epic trip. We should fly to Hawaii helicopter. It's like, no, just like go chase a lemon. It's good. To, it, all, <laughs> it all comes back to the lemon. Yeah. <laughs> so you need more lemons in your video. That's really. so funny. Yeah. I agree on the relatability part <laughs> for sure. Like you can't always relate to like someone hanging out of a helicopter and you know, I've, I've said this in vlogs before. It's, it's just, it's the personality that counts. And that's why we are addicted to certain TV shows and characters yeah. and stuff like that. And it's like, if Daryl dies, we riot. Yeah. <laughs> because like, I like Daryl more than I like the actual Walking Dead series. Like yeah. I like him as a person. I like his, I like his acting. I like his character in the show. And if it wasn't there, I'd be like, well, the hell with this show. Yeah. And it's almost the same as a vlog, right? Like you remove anybody from their own vlog episodes and fill it with just some random or just fill it with nobody. It's just, it's just like no talking B-roll of all these places for the whole thing. You'd be like, this sucks. Like yeah. this is just like, there isn't, I'm not getting what I need or what I normally get from these episodes because the main ingredient is missing, yeah. which, which is you. So, you know, think of late night television. You watch Jimmy Fallon for Jimmy Fallon because you want to see how Jimmy Fallon reacts. You want to see him break down when yeah. he's trying to make a serious face in yeah. some game that he's playing. And, and I, being awkward again. Yeah, and it's like you don't watch it because you're like, wow, like the camera work that those crane operators, like yeah. Adam, if you, were, if you were a crane operator on The Tonight Show, like great job. Yeah, great. But like, we're, I'm sorry, but we're not watching it. We're not watching it for your great camera operator. Yeah. You know, and it's, I think it's the same thing with stand-up comedy. Yep. You say relatability and stuff. And I think people find jokes so funny sometimes because you're like, that is so true. Yeah. Like, why is it that whenever that happens and whatever the joke is, like, yeah. you know, um, what's a good example? Like customer like a, service or something like that. And you're like, I've been there. I, I, I did that. Yeah. Jerry right? Seinfeld's really good yeah. at like, uh, like um, highlighting areas in everyone's life that like you would never otherwise think about that you're like, yeah. Why is that a thing? Why yeah. does that happen? Why do you have to put your coin in that way? That's yeah. super annoying. I've never thought about that, but you're relating, yeah. which is what's making you laugh, which is what's making you open to the experience. Yeah, I think and one of my favorite- powerful. Yeah, one of my favorite jokes is like, it was like a female comedian. And she was just like, anyone other, like anyone else's husband do this? And he's like, spins the bread bag and then puts it down and folds it underneath. Oh, so, all the time. Yeah, yeah. But it's like the <laughs> smallest thing, but people relate to that so much. And yeah. I think that's like, it's the little details. Think about the little details and how you can turn that into like a story or something really exciting and own the little details like yeah. I, was, I was telling i was telling chris about this woman who made a super funny joke about yeah. like i suck at math like i failed math in high school i failed in like grade 10 i failed in grade 11 i'm terrible at it yeah. and i always like oh eight times seven is why we have calculators and like she's dealing blackjack and they're like there's a five and a seven do you want to hit or bust and she's just like i can't add so i don't play blackjack <laughs> 
And I'm like, oh, I fully get that because I'd be like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, nine, twelve. I should hit. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I just, I just own the fact that I'm just miserable at math. I just suck at it. That's why I use my phone. Yeah. But like, it's the relatability to that woman that I had when I was like, I'm the same, which is what instantly like draws a connection. Yeah. And I think those connections are more important than the stress that we're putting on ourselves to come up with ideas, to shoot great B-roll, to try and travel the yeah. world, to use great, to shoot in 4K, to you know make sure that these lights and this microphone are all perfect. Like I'm sure, <laughs> everything aside, if we just set up a live stream and done this on our phone, yeah. or if we just filmed the whole thing on our phone, it would people would still watch because it's less about the phone, more about the topic and the two personalities. Yeah, and the conversations that are yeah. being had, the, the message that we're trying to like just yeah. talk to you So with all that being said, this video is entirely pointless. Goodbye. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Tell, um, tell me about that song you wrote back in that time of your life when you wrote songs. Okay, so do you still write songs? I I want to get back into it. You should. Man. Yeah, listen. You should put that on like, your channel. Yeah. Do you guys this... want to hear an acoustic album? Chris <laughs> Chris sings and, and plays music and stuff, and and that's what he used to do back in the day. And you should do more of that. I will. I yeah. want to bring it back to life. It's just like everybody wants to see Videos. more magic tricks and yeah. stuff. Like you need to do more music. Okay, you just do. Ma okay, magic a magic I've been video doing it. while I'm playing songs. That there's there's the collab. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> no bad ideas. Yeah. Um, actually, on that note, in terms of like saying yes and or like no bad ideas, um, one of my favorite things is when I was working with this one producer. We were like recording this song, and he was always like, "Hey, we should put drums on this track." Now I was like, "Oh, but does it does it need drums? Should we think about it?" He's like, "No, no, let's just let's just try it." I was like, "Oh, sure, yeah, let's do it." And he's like, "Cool, here's a drum." He's like, "I started playing some stuff. We started building upon." It. He's like, "Okay, here, uh, baseline now. Let's uh, add a baseline." I was like, um, "But I, I kind of wanted the song to be like rock." He's like, no, no, baseline. Let's do it. Baseline. I was like, "Okay, cool, producer. I'm just going with the vibe." So he puts the baseline. Like, actually, this is. This is sweet. What else can we put on? He's like, yo, shaker. Okay, let's go. And we just started layering things. And I was just like, yes, and. And it's like a whole improv thing. Yes, and build on things. Because that's what ended up making that song so great is because if it didn't work, we'd be like, okay, scrap it. But we said, yes, we would try it. And I think the idea of like adapting an improv lifestyle to video is... If the yes and is so important because you can just take a simple kind of like starting point where it's like let's get together and go and hang out and then yes and yes and yes and and then there's something that might come from it that might end up being the best video might not but, but that, it might also be the worst but too. that's that's the thing right is like with ideas specifically kind of build upon them doesn't always have to be like that's the best one or this is the worst one build upon it because you might even end up at like a different area that you really loved uh, it's long just, tangent <laughs> that's fine <laughs> Yeah. Shut up, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I like when people say like, allow room for the unexpected uh, and like allow yourself to be like pleasantly surprised and stuff. Not necessarily like setting expectations like we mentioned at the beginning. I, I always like, one of my favorite like vlogging experiences, not for the fact that it was like super fun, but I learned a lot was when I went to Amsterdam to vlog with Casey. So I was literally in the air longer than when I was like on the ground, which which is crazy. So like I, he called me, like you guys know, with with like less than 12 hours and hopped on a plane, flew to Amsterdam, made a whole vlog, was super pumped in it. But like that was a lot of work. Like that was like, it was fun and it was great, but like it was exhausting. Yeah. You know, it to pay to get there. It was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a, so much yeah. work. And the funny thing about that vlog is like two days later, Casey was in Toronto <laughs> giving a talk about uh, at some influencer conference. And he called me again that day and was like, hey, can you get to the city in an hour? Drove down, we just made both, we, we both made just stupid videos within like 45 minutes or whatever he had for his lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> that video for me did better than the vlog where I actually flew to Amsterdam to make a video with him. The video the next day that I made in 40 minutes that had like no B-roll, like had nothing, it was yeah. just like, it just did better and his vlog was also super funny and we both laugh about it because we're like, wow, like, yeah, that was a great trip. But like those other videos too, like, man, did those just come together so well? Yeah. And it's just interesting how sometimes like you, you would expect like, no, this is going to be huge. Like I'm putting all this effort and all this work. I'm flying all this way. Yeah. I'm going to this epic place. Like this is all going to, this is going to be like the culminating piece of my entire career. And then, you know, you make a video about making videos sitting at your desk with your buddy and yeah. it does better than like seven days in Africa and the best edit you've yeah. ever made. But I don't think that means that those, those movies, those films, those videos are also necessarily worse No, because they did worse. No, I think, I think you should be very proud of that vlog you made with Casey because it was so epic. And I remember like when I first watched that, I was just like, 
oh, like amped up. I was like, I gotta, I gotta create. But so like, there's something, there's value to it. But I think going on that, you don't have to judge that something was good because it, it got a lot of views. Yeah. There's different, you know, lenses that you can look through. And I think, you know, the, the film that you made in Africa, that's something that you can always be proud of. You know what I mean? Oh, it's and like it, my best work. I still think so to this day, even though it doesn't have half the views that some other videos that don't even, in my opinion, deserve the views. Yeah. I don't think it means that it's less than. Yeah. I think there's also certain content that you want to go out there and create. Like one of the things that I want to do this year is I, I've always wanted to do a short film. I've never made a short film. It's always it's just like social, 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 more social, corporate, commercial. And it's like, <laughs> I, I want to make a short film. And it's like, even though I know that like probably not a lot of people are going to see it, I'm doing that for myself. So just changing my lens too, where it's like the ideas don't always have to be like, views and obviously that's a nice part about it yeah. you want people to see things but that's not the only reason why something is valuable you sometimes you just want to try stuff too like yeah i've been like wanting to try more comedy and just like you should do more like, please just <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun like i'm just slowly kind of working it in when it feels right or if i have like what i think is a funny idea i'm like yeah you know what i'm gonna film that and, I, yeah. and i've got a couple like skit ideas that i plan to do but and they might not be super successful what? Nothing. <laughs> they might not be super <laughs> successful, but like it, it still shouldn't stop me from executing those ideas. And I think sometimes a problem that I have a lot is just just following through with an idea. Like I could have 17 things written down on my phone for like stuff to shoot for YouTube videos. And then I look at those things like two weeks later and I'm like, no, 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 no. Forget it. I yeah. still don't know what to do. And I think it's just like, get out of your own head and just make stuff, like have fun making stuff. That's why you're watching these videos, probably to be inspired and because you enjoy making things too or whatever it is, whatever field it is. I think it's important to just like execute on your ideas versus letting those ideas become things that you're just not interested in, which is what I'm, I'm really bad at that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to do that myself because there's, there's ideas that are on my phone that have like, lived and then died in my phone yeah. and I was super excited about them one time I was like, I'm gonna make that I'm yeah. gonna make that and it was like a year goes by and I never made it and it was like and or someone else goes and makes it and you're like oh, or or you shot it think it so much or you've shot it like let's say we shoot this whole little interview video whatever yeah. and I'm like thinking about it tomorrow morning or I'm thinking about it tonight I'm like you know what it was way too long we talked about so many different <laughs> things like I don't really have like I don't feel like editing it because it's probably gonna be boring like three angles and then next thing you know, like maybe you don't put it out until like Tuesday or maybe you don't put it out till Friday or maybe you're just gonna, I'm just gonna work on, I'm gonna color it better or yeah. next thing you know, you're like, it's too, I just don't care. It's almost a good exercise yeah. if you are someone that creates content and like I'm a perfectionist, like if my B-roll doesn't look a certain way, there's a slight camera shake in just, a, if I'm shooting in 120 and it's a perfect, it's moving in close and then, yeah. oh, it just, it just kind of goes out. It's garbage. Delete it. I don't even want to see it. And even still, at the end of my videos, like I I'm pretty much always unhappy with my videos. It's just like, I don't know. I just don't like my own stuff. And it's because I'm so hard on myself and such a perfectionist. So it's kind of like liberating, also challenging doing a video like this where it's like, I'm not going to have any B-roll in it. Like yeah. there's no music I can loop for like 30 minutes without wanting to go crazy. So like <laughs> I might not even put music in this video and just thinking about that stresses me out. It gives me anxiety, yeah. but I think it's good to like do things that make you feel so uncomfortable. I think that's, that means, that means you're growing. That means yep. as a creative person, you are, you know, you are expanding that toolkit that you have. And I think the bigger that toolkit is, the more valuable it is because you just understand everything better. So this in and of itself is kind of like us stepping out of our comfort zone and yeah. doing something that is completely outside the realm of everything we've done before as far as YouTube goes. Yeah. And then not sticking to that formula is really nice. Like I, this feels really good. And I also like, I like the idea of like going with good energy and, and constantly building upon that too. I, it, this is, I really enjoy this. I'm glad that this also, <laughs> this video took a turn in the middle of making <laughs> this really video. Did, yeah. We were like, oh, it's, here's the concept. And then it's like, now we're here. And thank you for, for joining along. I think having a, it. but having a positive outlook going into any project is important. And we were talking about like being pessimistic versus being uh, optimistic. Yeah. I, I'm an optimistic person. I would also. I, well, like I would even say like I'm maybe. I, I probably come across on camera as like an overly over the top optimistic, and I try to be. I try to be like pumped on everything and yeah. like yeah, everyone's got good intentions. I probably realistically sit somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Like I understand that like 
you know, I understand that like, this is reality. This is like, yep. this is where I'd like it to be. And like, I know that like there's a happy medium, but I think going into projects with like a, a positive attitude, even if you're unsure of what it is that you're shooting is going to be like a, a big, you know, like what's, what I'm trying to say, like a, it's going to dictate the outcome of that piece. hundred percent. Right. So if you go into this being like, I don't think this is going to be a good video. He just wants to, he wanted to come over and talk and it was his idea to just, just for uh, just roll the cameras. Yeah. It's probably not going to be good, let's but we'll three see. Three angles, yeah. But with yeah, let's let's set up three angles. That's a great idea. <laughs> but I think going in with that attitude to anything, yeah, you're you're probably going to come across. It's just it's just not going to be good. So I think, um, yeah, um, no, that's the, that's the kind of my time point. Peter asked, he's like, hey, do you want to come over? Like, we'll make that like spark video, like the <laughs> oh, like the um, yeah, the... what's it called? Steel wool. He's like, do you want to come over? Do you want to make the steel wool video? I I was so nervous and I don't even think it was like, it's not even about the opportunity. It was just that I was like trying to like always stick to this format. I was like, it needs to be good. There's so much pressure I put on myself that I feel like I didn't have, I didn't even almost like, it just felt uncomfortable for me. It was a good exercise. Cause I was like, oh, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. But like the, this feels amazing. I feel like a lot less like, stressed out and like I don't know there's something special about that that like feels really good that I like trying this thing something new and and you'll feel that a lot of the times on set too where you're like you'll ha you'll have a shot list for everything like especially with our corporate and commercial work there's so many times where I'm like shot list we need to get this 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 and this and the best shots always the best shots were the ones where I just showed up was like all oh, the light right there looked amazing do that hey, again go over there and then you're like you know what Turn off all the lights. Yeah. Just forget this. Come over here. Come over. Drag that to this side. Yeah. Like, pump that mist there. Oh, yeah. oh, this is looking so good. For, oh, yeah, you know, man. they can go home. They can go home. Forget this whole thing. Yeah. And then and then you look back and you're like, wow, we didn't use any of the stuff we rented. We didn't use half the people we needed. We did all this outside of the studio that we rented. Yeah. And it's like a thousand times better than it would have been had we just like stuck to the script. Nothing wrong with the script. Yeah, a balance for between a reason, the two, but for yeah, sure. Allowing room for improv yeah. and for just anything to happen. You know, it all kind of comes back. Yeah. It all kind of comes back. So, I mean, this, this was a very unexpected turn within this video. Yeah. It was very I'm stoked it, on it. Man. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped <laughs> yeah. on it too. I mean, it started as a kind of off the wall idea as it is. And then it literally morphed mid video to something else. I'm not even sure what it is right now, but I'm going to upload it. Yeah. I'm just going to put it on the internet and we're going to put ourselves out there, which is what it is to be a creator. Yeah. You know what's cool about this video specifically is I can leave here today and f I feel really good about it. I'm like, I don't even have to worry about like, well, what the, what's the etiquette gonna be like? Well, Do you think well, I like, came across okay? Oh, like, how's my hair look? Like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it always looks good. I had, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys. Um, but yeah, gen genuinely, like, I, this felt great and I, I really, I really hope you guys liked it too. And like, I hope somebody out there got something from it yeah. that at least motivates you to push forward, even like, I think it's I think it's important sometimes for for you guys to know that like we're people too. Yeah. And we struggle with the same things that you struggle. Just because I have a larger platform to put my work on doesn't mean my work means more than yours. It doesn't mean that I'm more valuable than you. It doesn't mean that like the the videos that I make are always going to be yeah. superior to yours. It doesn't. We're the same. We're all yeah. creators. We're all in this together and we yeah. all experience the same road bumps. I think we just have the experience now with making these every single day, then then we can say like, Hey, this is where we get hung up. Like maybe this will help you yeah. to not get hung up. Yeah. And that's my goal with this video. We're trying to just share our lessons with you. And that's, that's what it's coming yeah. down to. We we've been through it and we want you guys to grow too. Yeah. With that being said, we're going to go eat chicken wings. Cause like I'm yes. so hungry right now. Right? I'm so hungry. We've worked up the biggest appetite just talking. Like my face hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Now I could eat this boom mic right now. Like I could eat everything on this desk. Like I'm just like, uh, I just eat the whole deck. 52 of them. 54 yeah. It needs more hot you, sauce though. 54 if you include the jokers. 55 if you include the how to play poker card. Yeah. 56. Is it 56 with these two jokers? Fi no, it's 56. Uh, okay. Oh. I see. Yeah. I was, was going to say 56 bye. if you bye add the guys. card that, that says follow us on Facebook and Twitter, but <laughs> you guys can do that too if you yeah. want. Okay. <laughs> Let's just let's just stop recording. Let's turn these off. We start. Bye. Bye.